Live from the Congress Center in London, England, it's The Cube at MIT and the Digital Economy, the second machine age. Brought to you by headline sponsor, MIT. MIT IDE conference, the initial of the digital economy. Uh, MIT's two professors, Eric Brynjolfsson and Andrew McAfee, wrote this great book, The Second Machine Age. Really innovative book. Uh, the first machine age, basically the premise was the steam engine, uh, and now the second machine age is the computer. Interestingly, it took decades after the steam engine was introduced to, act, to really have an impact on society. It wasn't until the Watt steam engine, decades later, that productivity really started to pick up. And with computing, we have now entered, according to the authors, the second machine age, and the second half of the chessboard, Google, second half of the chessboard, Ray Kurzweil, and they talk about the power of exponents, of exponential growth. And that's really what we've been talking about all day. We've been talking about the impact on jobs, how machines have always replaced jobs, but now they're replacing not only manual labor, but they're replacing cognitive tasks. So, I'm here with Stu Miniman. We're also happy to welcome Steve Chambers, Stevie underscore Chambers on Twitter. Gentlemen, good day. Steve, what's your take? You were watching all along, you were watching the crowd, firing questions in from the crowd chat. What'd you make? Well, today has just blown my mind. It's absolutely blown my mind. I mean, the four main themes, which were incredibly well presented, I mean, these guys clearly know their stuff. You know, you, you hear about all the deep research they do and you think, oh, it's going to be quite dry. Oh my God, they're really engaging. And they, and they came out with um, slides and charts and messages that just kind of made sense of everything you see, right? Why Apple are doing so well, why some companies are struggling. We went through pricing, went through automation. I mean, it was so much to take in one day. I'm just really glad I was You're here. a technology guy by background. You're in the UK. Uh, you've seen the, the, the gap between uh, technology adoption in the United States, what happens in Silicon Valley versus sort of rest of the world. Um, what's your take on the situation in Europe generally, the UK specifically, in terms yeah. of technology adoption and yeah. their ability to capitalize on the second machine age? Yeah, and I think what I was thinking before I came here today, it also came out in a bunch of questions, both on the crowd chat, which was great, and I'm from the room. You know, people are kind of, they're excited by this second you know, generation, but they're also worried about their jobs, they're worried about being left behind. They worried about the whole market changing. There were some great charts today showing how, um, I think it was income was splitting away from gross domestic products. You know, and you see all the, and you can, they just did such a great job of visualizing what's happening today and where things are going. Although they're also very honest and they said, we don't know where it's going to be in a few years either, right? You know, that's the thing. And, I, and we heard several questions from the floor today saying, you know, what about the people that were kind of, um, you know, antagonizing Google about the buses and things like that. You know, these people felt, and I think the word was disenfranchised. You know, so people are clearly feeling as threatened as excited by uh, what these guys were talking about today. So I should, have, I should have done a proper introduction. I'm sorry, Steve is our newest cloud analyst. He's based in the UK uh, with Wikibon. I'm really excited to have you on board. Thank you. You know, Stu, uh, another fundamental premise was oh, historically if if productivity increases, median income increases. That's not yeah. been happening in the last several years. Certainly subsequent to the Great uh, Recession, we didn't see a, we've seen a bounce back, a dramatic bounce back in productivity, but not in median income. Since 1999, median income in the United States has dropped from 54,000 to 50,000, quite stark. What was your take on you know, that information and just the day in general? Yeah, so, so first on the day in general, Dave, you know, I, I had kind of high expectations coming in and, and they were met. Uh, we were talking, as technologists, uh, we kind of say understanding technology and being an enthusiast for it means that you're optimistic about the future and what this could bring. That being said, you know, I've got kids and I'm worried about jobs. Um, from the productivity piece is the one thing that I'm a little bit, you know, s still not satisfied with the answers that I heard today. We heard that, you know, free things in the economy aren't measured as well, and maybe we're not understanding it as much. But that being said, I think if you got the, you know, average kind of middle class person, they're worried about their job. They have many jobs. The careers are changing so often, and that hollowing out of the middle is a little bit dangerous. 
That being said, I think Eric Brynjolfsson uh, gave a great answer as to, you know, it's not like all jobs are going to be gone yeah. in a couple of years. I do worry about, you know, hey, all these great people that are driving Ubers today, well, is Uber just going to be a self-driving car yeah. in a few years? Because I don't know if any that the whole service industry is going to go through change. But there's lots of room for people to work with people, and you know, there should be a shift, there should be retraining, but, you know, things are changing so fast. Um, the, the closing line uh, that, that I heard towards the end of this summed it up so great for me. We can either protect the future from the past or the past from the future. And, and I always want to be optimistic for where we can go. And I, and I think that there was a great dialogue started here today and I, and I want to you know, chew on it some more. Well, Stu, I, I loved what you were saying to Eric and Andy about, you know, you drive down the highway, you can always tell when somebody's texting. Yeah. They're swerving in your lane. You have to be so careful. I always tell my kids that just got their licenses, well, you got to be so careful. <laughs> it's such a defensive driver. And you got that guy's, and sure enough, you go by and they're texting or they're hiding their phone. Or, so, yeah. you know, I, I think that the day will come where a self driving car is safer than a, than a human powered vehicle. But so many implications of what we talked about today. Uh, again, Sir, Sir Steve, as a technologist, the big thing is digital products are different. Right? If you eat a piece of fruit, it disappears. If you consume a digital product, it doesn't disappear. I can buy it, Stu can buy it, you can buy it, and then millions of other people can buy it. Yeah. Do you think, when you talk to companies, when you talk to CIOs, um, IT practitioners, CTOs, are they focused on the issue of digitization? Are they intensely focused enough on digitizing their businesses? And do they understand what that takes, what organizational changes, what skill sets are, are required? Yeah. I, think, I think it's definitely a mixed bag, right? So, You'll meet, um, in some enterprises, they think the chief digital officer is just another name conjured up, it's another fad, it's not really real. You know, that you, you hear that, you see it on Twitter, you see it from some clever people as well, right, that it's just another name. But some other people are really embracing it, right? Some big companies are saying, you know, this is where we need to move and change our model. And I thought it was really well explored when we went through the platform um, presentation today, and I really encourage people to look at that as well. Because it, it told us something we all knew, uh, you know, you talk about Apple and the way they built their ecosystem, and it all looks kind of obvious, but it wasn't obvious a few years ago. And I thought the guys did an excellent way of, of taking that apart, why it happened, why it made sense. Uh, they brought in some great knowledge tips from venture capitalists who spend all day thinking about this stuff. But I think they also answered some of the questions well, you know, so I think there was one of the questions in the crowd chat um, when it said, well, if someone's already got an ecosystem in place, a platform in place, is there no room for anyone else in the market? You know, if I come next to the market, right, Stu, is there any point? Oh, yes, yeah. Steve, great point. Actually, uh, John Furrier is banging away in the crowd chat right now and talking about some of the dominance of some of the big players. Yeah. You know, we use the example of Waze here a bunch of times. Waze did some great stuff. Up, oh, it's bought by Google. Great platform company. Google's sucking up a bunch. Right. You know, Apple. Amazon, they talk mostly on the consumer side, but Amazon, huge platform, obviously, in that market. Uh, I'm curious, you know, we were saying that there's lots of innovation happening in UK, around the world, but a lot of those platforms started in the US. What's the viewpoint you see, both from this event and just your experience on that? Is there concern about that? We have a whole Snowden effect, uh, you know, souring some people about, about cloud and US-based clouds in general, um, but kind of US-based platforms. Well, interestingly enough, one of the, one of the um, attendees today, um, he'd been working with MIT on the platform piece for, for a few years and they were trying to apply it to their product set in Europe. And he said the strange thing, strangest thing happened, they thought the best way to have a cloud product was to build their own cloud and then go to market with that. But what they found was that took quite a lot of time to do, quite a lot of money to do. So they started going to market with services that were kind of running on someone else's cloud, but they were kind of owning the billing and the contractual relationship. So from the outside, they had several cloud services while they were building that, you know, they were using the platform play, saying it was more important to get customers using the kind of platform system, even if all the platform wasn't in place. Now, I wouldn't have thought that would have made sense a few years ago, but, you know, here's obviously a forward-thinking customer, which they might see and said, this might work, and it has. So they've got revenue coming in, which is funding them building their new cloud platform. Who'd have thought about that a few years well, ago? Marshall Van Austin gave a talk today, talking about the platform. Thou shalt have a platform. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and you think about it, think about the companies that we follow. And we were talking, um, we were talking off camera to Eric and Andy about Dell. You know, what do you think about Dell, blah, blah, blah. And obviously we love what Michael Dell has done to take the company private. What's the platform play there? Yeah. It makes you think about that. Um, yeah. yeah, well, Watson was the big one today, got mentioned a lot, and of course, Watson, it's a platform that they're trying to go into lots of verticals. Well, and IBM's reorganized the company, and one of the divisions is platform. So Ginny flattened out the organization and 
well, the Watson Analytics is under Picciano, but, but Watson is its own division. So presumably that's a huge potential for IBM. It's quite unique in, in the yeah. industry. VMware's a platform, Amazon yeah. has a platform. I, mean, I guess anybody with an API has the potential to be a platform, but it was interesting listening to Marshall, you start to think about and evaluate companies in that context. And of course, this is nothing new, right? I mean, Furrier's always talking about the platforms and the Silicon Valley yeah. crowd is, is always talking about it, but when you start to evaluate it in the context of the digital economy, it starts mm. to come into clearer focus, mm. the imperative to have well, it, that platform. It was a great quote today, um, and I think it was Andy that said it towards the end, but there were so many great statements out today. I mean, my head's just full of them. I think they're falling out of my ears. And um, he said, you know, if you think about if you think about your business from the perspective of the you know, new digital economy, you start seeing all the things that just don't work in that new world. And I think there are a lot of, and I was just talking to another one of the attendees today saying, you're going to come up against people problems, right? At the end of the day, it's going to be the culture of your company. So okay, having a CDO, the chief digital officer saying, this is the brave new world, and you've got 50,000 staff. That's a people problem, right? <laughs> so. Um, it's not just a product problem, so right. I think there's a lot of work to be done. All right, Stu, platforms, products, we'll give you the final word. What's your take on today or anything else you want to share? Uh, so, wow, I, I think that the uh, gentleman we had on from the BBC uh, summed it up well, um, is uh, what we like about this, this audience and this discussion here is we don't have all the answers yet. Mm -hmm. What we know is it's changing really fast. Um, as we, we, we know oftentimes it's, uh, is, as long as we don't, you know, come after the computers with hammers, yeah. um, because you yeah. know we can't let the luddites win. Um, <laughs> you know, the technology is going to move forward, and innovation is, you know, rampant. It's, yeah. you know, there's always, oh, we've reached the end of the life cycle of this technology, but th there's something new. It's the combinatorial uh, pieces that are come together. Um, so, you know. I'm excited about the opportunities. I'm concerned about uh, things like education. Uh, you know, if people don't understand the basics and have more building blocks, they can't build those combinations. Uh, you know, the, the most read art uh, article that I ever wrote was about uh, the Nicholas Carr book about Google, and it just you know it shallows their mind and makes us stupid. And you know, an event like this where we can really dig deeper um, yeah. and have people that want to debate and discuss it is great. And I yeah. think Andy McAbee made a great point. He's like, people always say like, oh, you know, that's security issue, I'm not worried about it because I understand it. And by the way, most people do too. They're not sitting there like, oh yeah, we all click the I accept button real easy, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean that we don't understand right. what happens to our information. So people do think about it more than we give them credit to. Uh, the average person you know, can, can handle it, and we think the average person has some good future uh, you know, possibilities in the job market if they learn to run with the machines. I can see today's got your brain going, Stu, so we'll, uh, we'll enjoy talking about so this. So the digital imperative <laughs> is alive and well. IT does matter, speaking of Nick Carr. And, uh, I just always love to throw that in. John Furrier will love that little Yeah, well, little I, I, the, Andy actually did a debate once with, with uh, Nick Carr because Nick is such the <laughs> pessimist on all this stuff and Andy's just the ever optimist. Um, but you know, it, it's always good debate. All right, well, Stu, thanks very much for co-hosting. Steve, appreciate you Absolute pleasure. helping us out with the crowd chats today. Uh, Matthew, Absolutely. Colin, good job. Brendan, thanks for coming over. Andrew, great job. We ship all this equipment around. Our ruggedized gear works it flawlessly, other than the, the crummy internet in London. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's not much you could do about that, but uh, good stuff. We, we were able to go live all day, and that's fantastic. I really appreciate it, Logan. Uh, Bert Lattimore back home, John Furrier in the, in the crowd chats, and, uh, and the rest of the team, Kristen Nicole and her team. Really appreciate it. So this is theCUBE, everybody. We love the collaboration with MIT. We do a couple of conferences with them a year. Uh, we'll be at the Chief Data Officer Conference in July. Uh, really appreciate MIT inviting us here and, and hosting theCUBE. I mean, the content is always fantastic. And thanks to you, everybody. Check out wikibon.org and premium.wikibon.com, our new site, uh, SiliconANGLE TV, and as always, siliconangle.com. And uh, as always, appreciate the input. Uh, hit us up on crowdchat.net. Go to crowdchat.net slash M-I-T-I-D-E and you'll see the crowdchat from today and a previous one that we did. Thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you next time.